Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. The leaders of the United States, Britain and Australia, meeting in California, have given details of a defence pact that will provide Australia with nuclear-powered attack submarines. President Biden said the AUKUS pact would boost security and stability in the Asia-Pacific region for decades to come. Three American submarines will be supplied to Australia. Mr Biden stressed that they are conventionally armed but nuclear-powered. We're announcing the steps to carry out our first project under AUKUS, developing Australia's conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarine capacity. I want to be clear to everyone from the outset, these subs are nuclear-powered, not nuclear-armed. Australia is a proud non-nuclear weapon state and is committed to stay that way. These boats will not have any nuclear weapons of any kind on them. The Defence Pact is a response to China's growing military and naval strength. The Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, said it was the biggest single defence investment in the history of his country. From Sydney, here's Phil Mercer. The Australian government is saying that this is a historic, momentous day for this country. It's quite clear that the AUKUS alliance now lies at the heart of Australia's strategic future around defending its national security interests. Uh, another thing that's clear is that uh, the deal to bring American nuclear-powered submarines to Australia means that the Australian military is now more closely aligned with the United States and the United Kingdom than ever before. The British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has described China as a challenge to world order. In a BBC interview, he said the UK needed to take steps to protect its interests, such as blocking Chinese investment in sensitive sectors like semiconductors. We need to evolve our approach to China. Now let's be clear, the so-called golden era is over, along with the naive idea that trade would automatically lead to social and political reform. But nor should we rely on simplistic Cold War rhetoric. A review of the UK's foreign and defence policy said Beijing's growing aggression in the South China Sea and Russia's invasion of Ukraine posed an epoch-defining challenge. It said there were implications for almost every area of government policy. President Biden has said he intends to visit Northern Ireland to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement that formally ended 30 years of conflict in the province. It was signed on the 10th of April 1998. Mr Biden, speaking at a news conference alongside the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, said it was his intention to visit both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. This is Moira Alderson with the latest world news from the BBC. Shares in banks around the world slumped on Monday, despite reassurances from President Biden that the US government would guarantee customer deposits of two collapsed lenders, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. All day long, Americans have been lining up outside their branches to access their funds. A storm that has ripped through Malawi has left at least 99 people dead and has overwhelmed rescue teams. The government's declared a state of emergency following Tropical Storm Freddy. Brown water has cascaded through neighbourhoods, sweeping away homes. Planes and helicopters can't fly because of relentless rain and fierce winds. Rescue teams are having to use shovels to try to find survivors buried in mud. Two Italian government ministers have said they believe a big rise in the number of migrants trying to cross the Mediterranean is partly due to Russian mercenaries operating in some African countries. Warren Bull reports. The Italian Defence Minister Guido Crossetto said the Wagner Group was deliberately pressing people to head for Europe to destabilise countries which support Ukraine. The Foreign Minister Antonio Tahani said there was concern that many migrants appear to be arriving from areas of Africa which are controlled by the mercenaries gave any evidence, and the head of Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, dismissed the claim, saying the Italian government needed to deal with its own problems. The threefold increase in arrivals this year has put pressure on Italy's right-wing government to explain the surge, as well as to solve the migrant crisis. Legendary American high jumper Dick Fosbury, whose technique revolutionised the sport, has died at the age of 76. The method he pioneered, throwing himself backwards over the bar, is now used by almost all serious high jumpers. It became known as the Fosbury and it won him a gold medal and an Olympic record at the 1968 Games in Mexico City. Fosbury's former agent confirmed that he died of lymphoma. BBC News.